welcome uh, to the show again uh, balaji and really appreciate you taking time over a saturday morning i know you know how lazy it could get <laughs> over the weekend so really appreciate you for that um uh, so guys balaji has been doing an amazing job and he is the founder of fx get active let's hear directly from you know uh, the horse's mouth like you know uh, can you throw some light on what you have been doing at fx get active and how did you start this journey uh thanks aditya and thanks sukant uh, really a pressure to be here on a saturday morning and uh, share whatever i've gone through as a journey right so fx get active has been my uh, kind of a personal journey where uh, being in a software industry and uh, not moving from the desk and working in desk for long, long as trying to question myself on uh, why don't we actually we know fitness is important everyone knows fitness is important right yeah. but what will we get started though we have access to gyms and most of the office spaces has gyms already and uh, we all get started like new year we all get started and within two or three weeks or maybe within three months most of them don't continue not even three months i would say <laughs> agreed so there was this uh, incident which happened uh, exactly in 2016 uh, we were all standing in a corridor and uh, one of my friend walks to me and says this okay we all are busy until we become sick and this had a huge impact on me and uh, this person whom i know very close uh, was a 3d modeler he, he it's a demanding desktop job he has to sit and work for long hours and he was putting his career at stake uh, because of a back pain chronic back pain that's when this uh, hit really really hard that uh, what are we running for and what are we doing if we are not able to take care of ourselves and uh, how can so here i am playing 3 4 hours on computers using games and all that but not able to go to even uh, for an hour for a gym and all that right so how can we mix this both and uh, make workouts really really exciting is what uh, it started off with and for the next one year we were just questioning everyone whom we met about uh, their own fitness journey and what are their struggles towards the fitness journey and this three things came to the top of the like three reasons they kept on repeating right uh, one is uh, it was boring for them mm -hmm. they didn't have time for it and uh, most importantly they generally start with their friend or colleague if he or she stops they also stop okay and uh, when we went deeper into this we understood it's a mindset problem rather than all this right? yeah yeah how can technology help in accomplishing this is what uh, i think the biggest problem is that it's very boring yeah i i, I talk myself uh, for myself you know i would i won't be able to do something you know for a very long time if i don't enjoy doing it just for the sake of it because for me you know probably health is not i would not want to do it just for the sake of workout but if you club it with you know some engaging activities then it becomes fun yes so i would ask you this question right say if you can look at say if you're looking at a fitness class do you want to go to a fitness class or do you want to play a sport with your friend right obviously the answer would be i would want to play a sport with friend right? so how can we make that uh, shift mindset shift of uh, making it enjoyable and uh, making it like a sport and so there are people uh, 10% of the people who hit the gym regularly right and uh, for them the it is a lifestyle for them right? they already enjoy doing workouts they already get pleasure from doing those workouts but for the rest of the people it is not so so it is yeah there is a huge gap right so where uh, people who are already into fitness the solutions are all made for them right but for people who are trying to get into the journey especially for people who are starting from 0 to 1 right just the first step right a lot of resistances that they have to go through even to get yes. there yes the journey is not pleasurable and if the journey is not entertaining they are not going to stay there and uh, the huge problem with fitness is this, right the, even if i start today for me to see the benefits for me to see the results i have to wait for a month or two i have to be consistent for that month or two 
and for that month or two the reward that you get the the points that you score or should be something very different than the fitness itself so that's what we are trying to do by gamifying the fitness experiences mm -hmm. right right and plus, plus i think what i have seen you know like either uh, there are two kind of people either you are not at all into it or you are completely obsessed about it. right so i think there is there are very few people uh, who are able to balance that as well right so yeah so what are the challenges what do you think you know the biggest challenges since you, uh, since you started working on uh, epic get active what has been the biggest challenges from your customers uh, that you have faced and what's the mindset shift for yourself as an entrepreneur that has happened you know over uh, over the time period over the period you have been working on this yes so uh, as an entrepreneur uh, when we started working on this and tried identifying this uh, this problem the problem was clear we could see that everywhere uh, obesity rates were increasing and uh, diabetes rates were increasing and uh, almost uh, the sedentary lifestyle has been contributing to 70% of the deaths worldwide right so the problem statement is very clear it, it's a huge problem it needs some kind of a solution right and every major player has worked in the space right every major player is trying to do the trying to provide solutions in this space right? and being sedentary myself right i am not able to find a solution for it i was not able to find a solution how do i make make it attractive how do I, though uh, we mostly experiment right lot yeah. lot of experimentation yeah we kind of try uh, try different things but we see that we rely on ourselves we rely on the motivation that we have right so that can take you only to a certain extent yeah yeah so our approach was to see how do we create an environment or an infrastructure or a support system which can actually make it easy for you to take the decision of whenever you're sitting on the couch to take the first step the moment you want to do something and uh, the time where you can execute it say if it's for a gym you have to go to a gym right you have to get ready you have to wear your shoes you have to wear your clothes gym clothes and travel to a place it could be in the right next building but still there's an effort which is required right right so this that initial minutes of thoughts where you're actually feeling that you have to do something and to execute it there are a lot of resistance points right we tried eliminating all this that's when we came up with the solution of a virtual reality headset where you actually have a headset which is there right next next to you and whenever you put it on just in your pajamas just in your when whenever you wake up and you can be working out within the next one or two minutes mm -hmm. got it got That's it oh sounds good sounds sounds great and how 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 is it how is the how does that option look like i mean uh, are the customers using it and uh, how are you approaching towards you know like what is your strategy towards scaling uh, this particular and solving this problem for the masses got it so virtual reality as you know is a new medium right like uh, how phones came in and how uh, laptops came in and all that uh, virtual reality is going to be a next uh, content consumption medium itself correct correct and correct. it's it's beginning to grow it's at it's its early stages of your early uh, big big televisions uh, big and bulky televisions that's that's where virtual reality is right now mm -hmm. but virtual reality has something which is very very unique right the ability to make you feel that you are in a different place it's called presence the ability to feel very in a totally different different environment and the moment you start interacting with the environment you will forget totally forget that you are in a different world like you will you will be immersed in the virtual world you will not realize that you are doing something in a virtual yeah, world yeah yeah and i think with apple headset and all that coming i think it's going to become mainstream very soon right So, so yeah apple headset is solving one of the biggest problems in virtual reality right uh, so virtual reality is not a necessity yet like your phones right yes, like yes. your laptops because virtual reality currently is being used mostly by gamers and some industrial use, use cases industrial use cases are too good right like say learning training training uh, people on uh, dangerous equipments training people on right. servicing machineries and all this this is the use case and this is the early adoption where that it's happening that is also mostly not even gamers is not that common it's also recreational once in a while type kind yeah. of thing you know, that is 
to some kind of vr gaming otherwise it's mostly industrial where the yeah. use case is actually you know yeah mainly used in oil and uh, companies for training and other places right mm -hmm. so this can only uh, grow to a certain extent but what uh, apple is trying to do is replace the computers with yeah. uh, right so if this becomes a reality and yes it is becoming this this year they are launching with their first headset so once people start thinking okay they can just use a headset to like how we are having google chat right now and we are communicating we'll be just it, uh, talking to each other over the table right so yeah yeah that's where it's, you'll be talking yeah, to me to me is still looks like a very far fetched you know thing because for that you have to wear something again you know it's quite bulky end of the day you can't it's not like phone you know that you can carry it anywhere you can use it at any point of time it's a still requires a lot of effort great uh, shushan the there's a company called site which started i think uh, almost uh, five years before or something and so, they are working on a contact lens they are working on a contact lens which yes. you can get and the projection is going to happen from there right so this is going to change it it will be like your uh, normal shades that you are wearing right it's already there ray ban glasses are there and other glasses are there and it's growing at a much faster the technology yes, i think i think uh, work has already you know it's it's still not there is probably going to take another Four five years or a decade for us to be there, but it's happening yeah. now. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's yeah. happening at a much faster rate than we expected it. Yeah, yeah, right. And and for you guys, you know, being uh, there, I think there is going to be a lot of this first mover advantage, you know, compared to what other traditional players are doing. So, do you see any friction from investors as well from the VC community? Because what I have observed, you know, that there is a lot of friction. There is a lot of apprehension within the VC community around. these type of uh, fitness related products there are very few of them that has actually you know survived and bloomed across uh, well, through last few years and stuff right so you have something like as you know fitter you have huddle etc etc but uh, not it's not too much and there is not too much just like you know fintech or e-commerce or crypto ai etc right it's still not a buzzword in, within the vc community so what are your thoughts on that Yeah, agreed, uh, uh, Shushant. So, uh, so there are two things. One is looking at it as a fit tech company, and one more is looking at it in the space of experiential uh, technologies, yeah. right? So, investors who know about the experiential technologies uh, market and uh, they're following this space are keen to invest, right? So, they want to invest on different categories within the experiential uh, fitness, experiential uh, technologies uh, space itself. If you're looking at uh, fitness technology, yes, there has been a, a caution in investments uh, in the fit fitness technology space. Yeah, yeah. But it is changing. After COVID, there's been a lot of uh, new uh, categories which has come up, and this is more like an experiential fitness category. Right. Got it. You guys Fit have any competitors, or is there any player in uh, maybe outside India in US or China? Who are doing something similar and they have uh, uh, a, they they have a good adoption. Yes, Shushant, uh, there are competitors. They are they are already in the space and uh, there are few companies which have already reached a billion dollar valuation also in the space with a very yeah. small yes small market right. And there are some other companies which are in the scale of around hundred million two hundred million dollars valuation right. So definitely uh, people have grown in the space. there are huge players in the space which uh, which gives us a good uh, acknowledgement of the space itself right who there are some these competitors in india uh not uh, anyone that we know of from india okay who has, who, has, who has grown to that extent but there are a lot of players coming there are a lot of players there's going to be a lot of players who are coming into the space mm -hmm. whoever has experiences at least once they know the potential of this product yeah uh, yeah So you were saying something. Please go ahead. So that's it. Like so, it's 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 about uh, anyone who has tried virtual reality and who has tried fitness in virtual reality, they know they know the immersiveness that it can give, right? So uh, if you look at technology, right, technology has disrupted many industries. Mm -hmm. But fitness has remained the same for almost a decade. I would say few few decades, at least. 
Fitness, it is same. The way the way you approach fitness, the way you approach healthy lifestyle, that is same. There might be multiple players who are trying to uh, you know build different products. So you have cult, right? But end of the day, the approach or how you are actually solving it that remains same. That hasn't changed. You go to gym, you work out, and you do stuff like that. that particular thing, right? We are trying to be a transformational player in the space where yeah. you don't have to actually work out to be fit. It could be that you're just playing a game, you're doing certain other activities, you're playing a sport or something, and you're still becoming fit. Fitness is just a byproduct of those activities. Right, right, right. No, that's interesting. That's nice. And how many, uh, if you don't mind asking that, so how many these corporate, because I think you guys are into B2B right now, right? It's not into B2C space yet. Currently in B2C, we moved to B2C. So earlier we were in B2B space pre-COVID. So what's the scale right now? How is the how is the customer feedback and how is it going so far? So we have had around uh, 500 users so far and uh, it's been really good. So we recently launched and uh, we could we are currently seeing uh, traction from around 15 countries. 15 countries? countries, yeah, 15 oh, different man. countries. Okay. So there is no equipment or anything is required, right? You just need to have a VR yeah, headset. Right? Yeah, you just need a VR headset. Right, right. And then you can download those apps from the Play Store, the App Store, and just go about it, right? Yeah. Similar to how you download your mobile apps yeah, from mobile. Yeah. Right, right. Same. Got it. And all these are paid users. So you also have a free plan, or all these are paid? So cu currently, we are in the alpha testing mode. So it's all uh, free plans. They're okay. looking at the demo classes. They're trying out the demo classes. So we have um, MMA training right now inside mm -hmm. VR. So this content has been provided by one of our national champion in India. Nice. So we are also adding meditation and uh, classes like Kalari Paita and all that, right? Some traditional mixed martial arts form from India. Okay. Got it. Got it. I think I think the the biggest uh, friction or the hindrance that you must be getting is that people don't. A lot of people don't have that VR headset in the very first place, right? So uh, I think the market is very limited for that. Do you see that growing? Do you see people buying these VR headsets uh, in the last few years, or how how is that growing in the last uh, over the last few years or the last few months? Yes, Shushan. So uh, currently, our market has been uh, focused on US and Europe market, where these VR headsets are available at least, right? So. Around uh, 20 million devices are already available. That itself mm -hmm. is a huge market, right? And there are companies which has grown to a scale of a billion dollars with this. We have right? Yes. So yeah. So there is a huge potential there, and uh, this is going to be become at least few hundred million in the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Interesting. How? What kind of tech challenges? you guys are facing or how do you build an IP around this? Yeah, so I, I've personally been, I, I look at the technology side and the product side of the company. So mm -hmm. I have two founders uh, who are into, uh, looks at uh, finance and strategy and also operations. So in the technology side, if you say, uh, I've been into uh, virtual reality for the past 10 years, started working on it since its inception. So okay. it's kind of, Rebirth of uh, VR, uh, Oculus yeah. was a device which actually brought this revolution in VR and all that. So I've been uh, personally using it and developing applications for corporates and uh, other other uh, applications, right? So I, I would say I have an advantage in that where uh, I've understood VR and uh, how to approach VR. It's not just about the technology side of it and also about the psychology of uh, what people go through inside VR. Mm -hmm. See, bump into each other in VR, you feel very, very different. It is. It feels so real. It feels so weird. <laughs> Though you know we are not actually bumping into each other, right? So there are certain aspects which has to be taken care of while designing for VR itself, right? I think those are uh, key challenges. The technology part is like anyone, uh, I think the knowledge is flat now, like you have access to so much uh, content. Yeah. Yeah. Create those uh, content and all that. And it needs a good uh, creative team. So the creative elements of it, the visual elements of it, the world that you're creating, it is very similar to architects building a real building here, right? So you're creating a space which has to feel real, right? 
right 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 yeah and just like any other you know gaming is studio right so it's i think it's more difficult or more complex than uh, producing a movie or something yes uh, we, uh, we are more like we operate more like a gaming studio you got it right yeah, yeah. right and are you able to get these vr developers engineers who are able to develop and build uh, you know products around vr how how easy or difficult access to that kind of talent is in the current market landscape we are developers uh, recently uh, i would say in the last one or two years there's been so much uh, focus on vr training and uh, tools like unity has made it easy for developers to get into virtual reality yeah and start creating right away virtual uh, unity as well as unreal right so both are there so anyone who is a game developer can actually get into uh, vr development the switch is pretty easy to make okay and there are uh, the infrastructure is also there like there are training companies which are focusing on this particular domain like a lot of training companies which are focusing on that domain mm-hmm. so in india if you are there in the main metro cities you will find a training center which is teaching you this very close to you got it got it and so, it is easily available the talent pool is also easily available got it got it sounds good so you have also you know uh, so so basically do you suggest unity developers or game developers to make a shift towards vr gaming or what uh, i mean uh, how does the future look like for them right and uh, how is the supply demand supply gap in the market for vr developers or vr game producers uh, as of now the vr market is just beginning right and uh, now only if you look at the uh, demand side of uh, we are there is a huge demand which is getting created mm-hmm. every day you can see there are a lot of projects which are coming and people are like working towards it right and the supply side has started now like in the last two years the supply side has increasing steadily increasing but there's going to be huge demand in the next coming years there's going to be huge demand and again the metaverse is going to be pushed there'll be a lot of things which will be accessible digitally and you need to know these tools to create for that it's right now only you can see there's a huge difference in the pay scale for uh, a game developer versus a vr developer right, right. the average pay scale uh, if you look at it for a experienced vr developer is somewhere around 250000 dollars in us okay got it and this is for a mid senior range right yeah mid senior range this is pretty good right yeah yeah how about india how does that translate to india india i would say it uh, starts somewhere around 15 lakhs and goes forward for 2 to 3 year experience folks yeah that's nice so guys i think this is something that you should actually you know dive into if you want to really make yourself ready for the next generation of uh, gaming and vr yeah right sounds sounds good so you have also i just saw you know that you also mentioned something around the fml problem that you guys are facing right now so can you would you like to throw some light on that as well fml is a so fml is uh, expanded as fix my life challenge so our approach towards uh, fitness is more of body mind and soul mm-hmm. it's a holistic approach it is not just about the physical aspects of uh, fitness so we have created this uh, challenge where uh, kind of we are addressing different aspects of fitness right and uh, we right. choose certain activities uh, which can which can actually be, make you more mindful about what you are doing and uh, help you towards a holistic fitness approach so that's what we are doing right it's more it's a most more mindful approach towards fitness yeah and a holistic approach to fitness i said yeah got it got it so uh, malaji you must have also seen right so with this ai and chat gpt coming up in the last few years there is a lot going on in the market in the vc uh, community around ai so you just use the word ai you can probably raise few hundred thousand or a few million dollars right so how are you planning to leverage ai with uh, affects get active if not now then do you have any plans how do you think ai can play a role uh, around fitness 
AI and machine learning are definitely tools that uh, we have to embrace. Mm -hmm. And uh, say uh, what what we feel is uh, when we are able to feed the data, whatever our trainers and coaches are giving into machine learning models, and uh, we are looking at creating virtual doubles of these trainers, right? Okay, which can, that's which can, which can act like those coaches, right? Which can, yeah. So uh, let's assume I'm training. Uh, I have hundred classes of a particular coach. Right. right, you can create a body double around it and yeah. So he will be able to continuously take new classes every day. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in his own style. That's nice. The coach owns the content. Yeah. So it's not that we are trying to do it. Like it's it's a coach can customize that. And coach can actually focus more on uh, the human elements of it, right? So there's always a human element and there is some monotonous activities, right? So the monotonous activities can be replaced by AI and ML. Right, but don't you think that will, uh, this will be a matter of concern for some of these trainers as well, that their content or their approaches can be copied, just like we have deep fake right now, right? It's just another version of deep fake, correct? So your uh, their content and their approach can be copied and duplicated. So a raising a lot of concern around piracy and stuff, right? It is like any new technology, right? It's like a knife. Yeah. If we are using it for the right purpose, and uh, I think uh, if if it can, humans can never be replaced. Is what I believe, right? So. Is that sort of thing right yes. now? We never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in areas where it can uh, improve the performance or productivity of the person, and uh, if a coach is able to coach ten people in a personalized manner now, right? The AI and ML can give capabilities to make him teach 100 or 200 people. Right? Right. There is no limit. If it becomes, you know, then the sky is the limit. Why just 10, 100? It could be thousands and millions of folks, right? And I, I think this is a very interesting just use case. Just, about... just bear with me. For... Oh, sorry, I didn't get you. You were saying something? Yeah, can you speak again? Yeah. Hello? Uh, can you hear me, Malaji? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. No, I was saying it's not just about fitness because it's a very interesting use case. So I was just thinking about it. And when you look at it, you can probably replace a lot of, it can play a huge role in ethic as well. Right. So wherein a single teacher is probably, you know, kind of teaching 100 folks or 200 folks. Now that can scale to millions of users when you are creating a body double around that. And that teacher can now teach millions of users as well. So just bridging the gap between, you know, uh, bridging the gap to uh, great teachers and great uh, learning material. Yeah. So I, I would say this is a new era where uh, the last era was about automation and all this stuff, right? Here, mm -hmm. it's more about uh, enhancing human capabilities, any great product that has existed in the market, right? See, let's, uh, let's look at uh, a telescope. Yeah, it enhances your vision's capabilities. Yeah, right? yeah. So this AI and ML is going to be something like that. Right, right. So you guys are doing anything around this right now, or not as of now? Uh, sorry, Shushan, can you come again on that? I was saying you guys are doing anything around uh, around these lines with at FX Get Active. So we have that in the roadmap. Okay. Currently, we are not focusing on that. Currently, we want to focus on technology is really great for scaling up. Mm, yeah. So, but initially, we need to figure out what it is that we want to scale. And yeah. then, once we have established that core loop, then we think we will be using AI and ML to enhance the productivity and make it scalable to a much larger, much much larger audience. Got it. Got it. What are what are the Current, you know, uh, immediate focus for you guys right now. What is the immediate roadmap for the next quarter looks like for you guys? Yeah. So uh, if you look at the customer segment that we are trying to target, right, uh, we have uh, split them into three categories. Okay. And uh, one is the fitness enthusiasts who are already into fitness. We are trying to look, looking for a different kind of an experience and all that. And uh, the next is... Uh, People who are sedentary who are trying to start their first journey, first few steps towards a fitness journey, have a, a community-based 
fitness platform for them yeah. where they can come and hang out and uh, do certain activities together like a group class see people like uh, zumba kind of classes like people who like uh, a social experience yeah yeah right so that is one more thing which we are targeting and the third one that we are focusing on is building games building games which like want you to move like which requires you to move physically right which could be physically intensive right so these are the three product lines that we have and we are focusing on launching one from all these three categories so so this fitness you mentioned you know, like how do you transition the current fitness for folks who are currently on a fitness fitness into transitioning into this product right and driving adoption with this product so don't you see any kind of friction or challenge from this? what i typically observe you know that uh, these folks are very uh, particular about how they what they are doing right? who is being into fitness who is going who is going to gym for last Five years, ten years, they have a routine. This is what they do. They will not going to pick anything else, right? So that's what I have observed. I might be wrong, but what are your thoughts about this? See, I agree with you on that, right? So uh, when we worked with the coaches also and uh, uh, trying to digitize their content, right? So they are very particular about how uh, this content okay. has to be uh, delivered and all that, right? So there is a middle place. The mm -hmm. Consumer expectation is slightly different. Than what the coach is offering, right? So right. we kind of add a what we try to do is try to keep the core alive, try to keep the core content alive, try to add experiential layers to it. Like, say if we can add a nice music to it, right? Mm -hmm. So that that becomes an one, one additional layer to it, and add a nice interactivity to it, right? So you get a live feedback in workouts. You don't get actual feedbacks. Yeah, Here you get some live feedback on what is actually happening and all that. Right. So, this way we try to make don't deviate away from the core content as well as kind of enhance the experience of it right right sounds good sounds good and what are your you know like what do you uh i think uh, we are almost on time now so yeah. what are your thoughts on you know like what is your uh, suggestion for someone who is just getting started into their startup journey and what are the pitfalls that they should really avoid and what should be the focus for them yeah so i've made a lot of mistakes i can definitely talk a lot about this but uh one core thing i would say is this right don't wait for the perfect moment to launch yeah so start with something be right next to the customer try to understand this problem better than anyone else mm -hmm. and then start delivering right put an iteration out there you will it will never be ready <laughs> don't wait for the perfect moment no that is so true that is so true and i've seen so many people obsessing about you know uh, getting their first cut this that all that bullshit and taking i've even seen people you know taking a year or a two year to just launch the mvp so yeah fail fast i would say is the best approach like keep failing until you succeed right so when you guys started FX Get Active, so where you are right now, this is what you intended to start, or there were a lot of pivots from you know where you started and where you are right now. So as if, as if, as I said, uh, it's failing fast. We have been doing multiple experiments around this on uh, multiple uh, different uh, mediums. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, the environment changed, the macroeconomics factors changed. COVID mm -hmm. actually pushed the uh, uh, customer. So and I think for a lot of startups and a lot of industries, you know. Shushant, I'm not able to hear you. Just a minute. Just a minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Better. I was saying that COVID was actually very much pivotal for a lot of startups and a lot of industries. Yeah. I think it was a blessing in disguise. People started uh, realizing how important it is to be fit. Right. right. And even for us, it pushed us to a think harder about the problem that we are solving and uh, uh, took took a route which is uh, more closer to the customers. Yeah. Sounds great. Sounds great. I think uh, that's all I heard for now, for today. And uh, any other, you know, parting words that you'd want to uh, comment on or want to speak of, feel free. Um. I think much thanks for the opportunity, uh, Sushant. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, having this conversation with you. Yeah.
same year same year it was uh-huh. really nice understanding because this is something that even i don't get to learn or know on a day to day basis so this is very insightful and and i really open my eyes to you know for us as well and i'm sure this is going to be i open a lot of other folks as well i'm glad if it was useful <laughs> It absolutely was. It was an absolute pleasure. Sounds good. Thank you so Thanks, much Thanks, for Shushan. your time on Saturday, Balaji. Really appreciate it. All the best with what you guys are doing. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Shushan. You guys are doing a job. Your vision of you know, making people fit and getting their asses out of you know the chair and do something about their health. All the best for Sunday Labs also. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank doing you. Doing an amazing job. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Thank you so much.